There's a reason why poultry farmers are scared of Newcastle disease. Yes, the moment you see that green poop or your best begin to behave funny, you know, they, they, they don't have appetite, they don't want to eat, then you are scared. But relax. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to prevent and treat Newcastle disease on your farm. Oh, did I just say treat? Well, professionally, I'm not allowed to use that word. But then, I'm going to be showing you how to... What word do I use then? Okay, get rid of it. Okay, welcome back to DIY Hagrid, your number one animal scientist and your poultry success partner. So if poultry farming is your thing or you're looking to go into poultry farming, you need to subscribe to this channel because here I provide you with lots of information that you won't get anywhere else. So let's quickly dive into what we have today. New cast to disease, how to prevent it and how to manage it or get rid of it on your farm. So like I always do, I don't just go through, okay, this is the drug that you use to manage new cast to disease. No, that's the wrong way to address it. I need to let you know what new cast to disease is and this will help you in treating it because there's no one way to treat Newcastle disease. You need to understand it before you can manage it effectively on your farm. So first, Newcastle disease, there are reasons why it is very dangerous. You don't just want it. Farmers don't want to perceive it on their farm at all. And one of the reasons is because it's a viral disease that is it is caused by virus and the name of the virus is paramyxovirus that's not important but it is a viral disease and viral diseases we don't say that you treat them because they are not really treatable but you can manage them there are ways you can get rid of them that's how i can put it but technically you can you don't treat viral diseases like that another reason why it is very dangerous is because the mode of transmission is just crazy what do i mean it can be transmitted very fast within your floor. It can, the whole floor can have Newcastle disease within two, three days. Yes, especially when it comes to uh, the velogenic strain, the strain that is very, very serious. I'm still going to get to that. Uh, it can be transmitted within the whole flock in just a few days. In fact, the whole flock can even die within a few days. If it is a very virulent strain that attacks your birds, it can take the whole flock in a few days. And also, Another reason, and very important, this part is very important, another reason why it is very serious is because it has bad company. What do I mean? Newcastle combines or joins forces with diseases like CRD, like I talked about CRD in the previous video. I'm going to leave the link right here and also in the description down below. Uh, it combines, it joins forces with CRD, chronic respiratory disease, and also joins forces with E. coli, Escherichia coli, that's a bacterial disease. So when it joins forces with these it is a very complicated case and you really need to know what you are doing before you can get uh, rid of it so that's, those are the reasons why those are the reasons why Newcastle is very terrible so you want to know how to prevent it so let me quickly say a few things about prevention one of the very key things to prevent Newcastle is that you want to keep your farm away from other farms like the velogenic strain of Newcastle can tr go as far as five kilometers. The air can transfer it. It can be transmitted by air. Breeze is just blowing and it can carry it from one farm to another farm. Take a look at what five kilometers look like. Even if I throw a stone from here, I can't throw it up to five. Even one kilometer, I can't add that so you know what five kilometers you have an idea of what five kilometers would be so it is advisable to site your farm far away from other farms that's one biosecurity tip that you want to abide with and also you want to make sure that your biosecurity on the farm on farm biosecurity is very strong you disinfect the house before you bring in the new chicks you also make sure that you avoid strangers coming into the pen all manner of things and you want to avoid stress very important this is very important with uh, newcastle disease and even any viral disease for that matter because they capitalize on uh, suppressing the immune system of your best that's the main thing that they do then opportunistic bacteria diseases take advantage when the immune system is suppressed then bacterial diseases like e coli and then other diseases like um crd like i talked about it it's it loves stress crd loves stress so when there is stress it, the mycoplasma just begins to uh, populate itself in your bed so 
you want to make sure that you prevent stress you prevent stress as much as possible so that's a quick outline of what newcastle is what it is like so let me quickly talk about the three types of newcastle these three strains of newcastle so that you know what you are faced with on your farm before you even start to treat them you want to know which one am i faced with you need to assess which one you are faced with then you treat it your treatment will be based on that particular one and just before i forget one important way also to prevent newcastle is to vaccinate your best at the right time so you want to have a vaccination schedule that works and you vaccinate them at the right time i don't know why i left that out in the first place vaccination very important vaccination it is very important so like i said there are three strains of newcastle disease virus there are three strains and the first one i'll be talking about is the least virulent one which is the lentogenic strain don't worry yourself about the names lentogenic strains uh the that strain is this is the weakest strain the lentogenic strain is the weakest strain and oftentimes it just causes a mild respiratory signs you can see mild respiratory signs and that is um in the camp be having cough and all those things that are related to crd and also most significantly you will or you'll be seeing digestive signs like you'll be seeing greenish poop which is very popular people talk about greenish feces so you'll be seeing greenish feces you'll be seeing greenish feces and your that is your chickens will be having greenish diarrhea so that is the least virulent one the next one to it is the mesogenic this one i will slap you this one is the next on the ladder the mesogenic strain it is more serious it is more serious than the lentogenic strain and this one as uh shows more of respiratory signs it's often seen when newcastle joins forces with um, crd on your farm so the mesogenic strain is tougher and it causes slow down it causes slow down in the in egg production it causes a slowdown in egg production the lentogenic which is the first i mentioned that one too causes a reduction in production of eggs but then you may not even see any visible sign in the ends in the hands that are laying eggs the mature ends you may not see any sign of sickness all you just notice is a drop in egg production but for the mesogenic strain you may be seeing signs of uh, like crd in the among the flock uh with broilers it is it's going to bring them down like seriously it brings them down seriously and they come down with serious respiratory issues but the one that is very very serious is the velogenic strain this one at day one on your family can take 20 percent of your beds on day two you can take up to 50 percent and they three it can take up 80 percent before you know it it can wipe up the whole flock you don't want to you don't want to encounter that at all so the velogenic strain is very serious and it often comes with nervous issues the nervous issues you know you might have seen chickens or cheeks when they have things uh, when they have what you call torticollis you know the neck is twisted it turns the neck and you know sometimes they are even turning around they have the torticollis makes them to go around because uh, their nervous system has been compromised the nervous system is compromised and this disease like i said earlier suppresses the immunity of your bed seriously and that brings us to the first line of action what you want to do when you want to manage this disease on your farm i mentioned it brings down the immunity one of the things you want to do is to boost the immunity and very soon i'll be making another video on the treatment the organic treatment for newcastle disease but while i talk about the synthetic treatment i want you to focus on the area of boosting the immunity as well there's really no treatment for sale for newcastle technically you don't say i'm treating newcastle you are managing it you are managing it but you can manage it and you don't see those signs again on your farm so you want to boost their immunity and one of the ways to boost immunity is to first reduce stress every stress element maybe eat or, or there's no space among the flock they, they are choked there's so the stock density is so high you want to remove all those causes of stress then you want to give them multivitamins especially vitamin c you want to give them that anti-stress continually continually and then you want to treat all those secondary infections that come up like crd uh, e coli you want to give 
strong antibiotics that will attack those things yes i mentioned some antibiotics when i was talking about uh, the crd uh, in the other video you want to use antibiotics so for the treatment the drugs that you would like to use will be based on the signs that you are seeing after you have tried to boost the immunity with multivitamins and you are removing stress from the floor the drugs you, you will use will be based on the signs you are seeing for example if you are seeing crd i i vote for tylosine so drugs that are tylosine based you can decide to vote or subscribe to those ones and um for the e coli if e coli has joined force forces with um the what we call it now the newcastle disease then you want to go for drugs that have uh, active ingredients like the furazolidone you can also go for the sulfolamides uh, drugs and also the fluoroquinolones uh, containing drugs so these are active in the ingredients i'm going to leave them on the screen so that you can see uh, what uh, the spelling looks like you can go for drugs that contain these active ingredients they work effectively against the um, ex uh, essential coli that is e coli in poultry so you can combine those antibiotics and um, the anti-stress and with that removing the stress physically trying to remove stress from the flock too your best should perform better after a while and it is also important that you give them quality feed during that time because you are trying to give them the best form of immune response their immunity is supposed to fight the newcastle disease but since it has been suppressed because the virus is kind of stronger than them you want to support their immune system and when you're able to do this they should be able to bounce back to life so your morbidity ratio and mortality should not be so high if you act quickly if you're able to respond quickly you should be able to revive your flow and lastly because i'm your poetry success partner i would not deceive you there are times that these diseases this uh, bacteria diseases like e coli have resistance to some of the active ingredients so it is a wise decision to actually instead of doing a trial and error kind of treatment you can run a test you can run a lab test you can take samples uh, it also depends on the quantity of your chickens anyway if the number justifies for the expenses on running a test then you can just take samples run a text get a vet a veterinary doctor that is experienced in this and let them run a test for you to test for sensitivity of the bacteria to possible drugs so they can tell you okay just go for this trace we got because this particular bacteria will be destroyed by this drug so you want to know this sensitivity of a thing it is very important so that is it about newcastle disease if you think you've gotten value for uh from this video you want to hit the subscribe button also give me a thumbs up if you think you like the video and if you don't want to miss any of my uploads in the future you want to click the notification bell so that you get notified each time i post a new video so till we meet again peace